I want to do a video of Kentucky statistics. In uh, 2010, I had ran a campaign for state representative uh, for the 31st district in Kentucky, and I believe um, that the platform and the ideas that I had provided there not only was a, a good platform for uh, running in that district, but I think it's a good platform for the entire state of Kentucky. Uh, it's a lot of incredibly uh, progressive and some great ideas. But I had compiled a list of statistics and problems that Kentucky was faced. And while I knew that Kentucky had its problems when I wrote it down, I, when you get to see the list of all the statistics and the data, that's when you really see that, my God, it's uh, Kentucky's a shithole. I mean, we're really on the bottom of the barrel. Uh, comparatively, like we all know this, and like people get mad about the stereotypes about being toothless and can't read and, um, you know, other silly hillbilly jokes. But like, uh, people understand that and they don't like it when it's brought up, but the simple fact is that those jokes exist because there's a modicum of truth. Uh, there's a sliver of truth with those toothlessness jokes. Uh, we're number one for toothlessness, so, you know, we can't get mad if somebody says, oh, you're from Kentucky, so I guess you don't have any teeth. Well, you know, of course, I got teeth, right? But, uh, <laughs> I got teeth. Um, but a lot of folks don't, and a lot of folks are poor, and a lot of folks have um, meth faces, and a lot of folks have kids run around their trailer parks and are loud and obnoxious and are uneducated and are illiterate, and um, they, we're number one for cancer. Kentucky's number one for cancer, so we're dying off at a faster rate than everybody else. I want to start this off with a quote by Mahatma Gandhi. It's, uh, happiness is when what you think and what you say and what you do are all in harmony. That's when you're happy. When what you think and what you say and what you do are all in harmony. <laughs> right? Because that's, that's, that's what harmony looks like. Right? Uh, just like a, a sine curve or a cosine curve. So Mahatma Gandhi, he was a nonviolent activist. Um, one of the few successful nonviolent activists, which we killed, you know, whenever anybody wants to stand up and say, hey, let's, uh, let's have feast, uh, uh, freedom, peace, and justice, they get shot. Gandhi, MLK, Malcolm X, RFK, JFK, uh, Fred Hampton, a revolutionary out of, I want to say, New York. So recently, one out of four Kentucky children have been declared poor. Yeah, uh, we know this. We know this already. I've actually seen this number before, but they're saying that the this was been an increase. So, the um, according to this report, so one in four Kentucky children lives in poverty, and their numbers have increased starkly since 2005, according to the latest Kids Count report released today by the Annie E. Casey Foundation, mirroring a national trend. The number of the state's children living below the poverty line, defined in 2010 as 22,113 for a family of two adults and two children rose 18 percent between 2005 and 2010 according to the annual report which provides an annual snapshot of a child's well-being. In Indiana, one out of five children lives in poverty which was a 29 percent increase between 20, 2005 and 2010 uh, but Kentucky is still higher than Indiana uh, this data should spur government, which means that in Kentucky we got more poor people than Indiana, than Hoosiers. Uh, Hoosier daddy, you know, they got a lot of baby daddies in, in Indiana. That's a high police state, and it's racist as hell. They got Confederate flags waving in the breeze, so lots of hillbillies uh, who think that they're south, uh, but really they, you know, they, they got the agrarian south uh, correct. You know, if that's what you want to say, South is, is an agrarian society. But the racism, uh, that's, that's so dumb for anybody in the North to be racist. But Malcolm X warned us about that. He said, stop talking about the South. As long as you're south of the Canadian border, then you're south in America. It's racist everywhere. So Terry Brooks, the executive, executive director of Kentucky Youth Advocates, he cited the difficult economic times as he urged lawmakers to pass laws that can immediately benefit children. And he says that this new data should spur the government to action. I don't know why this new data would spur the action since they rarely cared about any of the new data. 12% of Kentucky's public votes. So the politicians don't have to answer to 
Um, most of the public, 6% of their base is all they really need to make sure is happy. If 6% of the base of those people who are voting are happy, fuck everybody else. And because the majority of uh, Kentuckians do not vote and are not participating in a democracy, I, I can only guess human nature that even our state government is filled with a bunch of professional corruptionists. And one of the few honest people, the Huey Long of Kentucky, Gatewood Galbraith, he spoke out against all the issues of Jake Payne, that Jake Payne would be, uh, pretends to care about poverty, gay issues, civil rights, um, anti-war, anti-violence, anti-police brutality, uh, but he mocked Gatewood the whole time. So there's a media issue, which is all across America, not just the Kentucky thing, but just shows even in, you know, uh, Louisville, the liberal media was boycotting Gatewood too. So just, just like I saw with the Nader campaign, the biggest fucking dicks on the Nader campaign were the Democrats. You want to be a real Democrat, then you speak the issues of Nader. You don't have to vote for him knowing that he probably won't win. But the point of a Nader being in the race is for the major candidates to adopt that platform. So vote Jill Stein in 2012, Kentucky. Vote Jill Stein, the Green Party candidate. Obama can't win. Kentucky is... 100% in the Romney camp. They might try some things here, but Romney, Kentucky will go Romney. Kentucky went Hillary Clinton in 2008. So even when we had the choice between Obama and Hillary, they voted against a black guy. And then you had uh, McCain, uh, the very first state, the very first state that voted for McCain was Kentucky. Like 6 p.m., polls are closed, bam. Kentucky's already gone to the corporate devil side. So there's a, uh, uh, just with those statistics nationally, we have a long strand of Democratic governors, and there's a lot of Democrats in Kentucky, um, but the Republicans embrace the racism ideals of the Confederates, of uh, the white supremacists, the uh, Nixon strategy. So because they embrace that racist strategy, that in, endears the voters of Kentucky who actually vote to go Republican. Right, it's it's all my money, and you all didn't do, uh, you all didn't succeed. You rich people didn't succeed based on uh, none of the infrastructure. Right, you didn't benefit from the roads or the bridges or the police or the fire department or the schools or the libraries. You didn't benefit from any of that structure. No, not from the running water, not from the sewage system. Now I'm sure you didn't get none of that. Right, it was all on your own, just by yourself. No parents' help, no banks' help, just by yourself. Right? Yeah, right. Bullshit. You didn't do it by yourself. So one out of four Kentucky children are poor. One out of four are dirt poor. 25% of Kentucky children are poor. We can go on with the poverty statistics. In Appalachia, you have um, five, 15 of the poorest counties in all of America are poor. In Appalachia, 15 of the poorest counties in all of America in Appalachia. So, you know, I said Kentucky's the toilet bowl of America, but really, and no offense, I mean... Um, I mean, it's kind of offensive, but, like, it's to, it's for a point. Uh, but the uh, uh, Appalachia is like the toilet bowl of America. It's got the poorest people. They're the most desperate. They're the most impoverished. And they've been forgotten. So, you know, when people want to talk about food stamps because it's a black thing or because it's a racist thing, no, Kentuckians take more of their fair share in the federal dollars and food stamp monies than all the other states. We're actually benefiting from this you know, inequitable situation. We take from the richer states and, we, and they give us to the poor uh, folks that we have here because they need to eat. Our poor folks have got to eat. Fifteen of the poorest counties are in Appalachia. So it's uh, the trailer park of Kentucky. So another statistic, um, Kentucky's number one cash crop is marijuana. It's our number one cash crop. Tobacco and marijuana is what lifted Kentucky into economic prosperity when it was first started. You had George Washington who says that if we wanted to succeed as a young nation, it must be required to raise marijuana. Thomas Jefferson wrote the Declaration of Independence uh, while smoking on his hemp pipe. The Declaration of Independence and the Constitution were both written on hemp paper. On cha-cha, now, Cha-Cha is an internet uh, instant messaging service, but I had asked them a few years ago what the percentage of marijuana for America come out of Kentucky, and it said 70% of America's marijuana comes out of Appalachia. 
Avalanche is carrying the number one. Uh, number one, you know, uh, producer of marijuana in the United States. Uh, John Robert Boone in the 1980s was busted for the biggest marijuana bust in all of history. And the biggest thing with it, uh, it was it was huge. There was like 70 people that got arrested. But the one thing that was consistent with all of them was the culture of silence. Don't snitch. Don't snitch. So we, uh, Poor whites have got poverty. Poor whites are on food stamps. Poor whites understand. Um, frankly, I think there's a lot of similarities between hood culture and hillbilly culture. Uh, delete, you know, the the supremacists, the black supremacists and white supremacists. Let them battle it out and see what happens between them. But those folks who are for equality, look at the similarities between uh, uh, poor black ghettos and poor white ghettos. Okay, poor white ghettos. They have a speak with a different vernacular, a different accent. They say taters and they say ain't and they say y'all. How y'all doing? I ain't from around here and all this, uh, this and that and the other. In fact, there's this one. Uh, mean, nasty-looking woman <laughs> uh, who, I guess, didn't recognize me as being the same as her. And I was talking about hillbilly bars, and I was like, "Oh yeah, like honky tonks." And I said it like in a, you know, kind of in a insulting manner. And she's like, "Is that what y'all call them? Is that what y'all call them?" But you know, y'all, y'all. I guess she was trying to say y'all white people, but like y'all, who says y'all? I uh, guess evidently she says y'all, but hillbillies. Y'all, how y'all doing? Uh, got some taters? Y'all want to eat some taters? Um, I I ain't know about that no good, no bad, bad, bad. <laughs> like Boom Howard, that's that's what Kentuckians sound like. So is that it, English? You want to talk about press one for Spanish or press two for English and how that pisses you off, which isn't a real problem. That's not a real problem. That's stupid, America. You want to be mad about that? That's stupid. Did you want to complain about that when people actually have real problems out here? All right, moving on. Um, oh, yeah, the number one cash crop, marijuana, could also, uh, if legalized, would fix our poverty woes and lots of other woes. You would tax it, regulate it, sell it just like alcohol, uh, keep it out of the hands of children, and tax it. And use those tax money to get the 25% of the children in Kentucky uh, up out of their economic oppression. So, quickly, I'm going to have to say this quickly. So, uh, compared to other United States, Kentucky is number one for the fastest growing prison so instead of buying schools and bridges and roads we're just throwing everybody in a prison because we think that's great private prisons they got to make their money right and the private prisons and the cops are uh, in tandem we're the number one state in the u.s. for child deaths and child abuse cases so kentucky's beating the shit out of their children white kentucky is beating the shit out of their children and they're uh... beating them up until they die in fact, the race uh, rate is 7% all across Kentucky. 7% is black folks. Take away the three major cities, and it's 4%. Kentucky used to be 25% African American at one time. 25% down to 4%. White Kentucky, what in the fuck did you all do? What did you all do? Quit being racist. Y'all been killing and lynching. So many people. There's so much blood on white people's ancestors' hands. Stop with the racism. That's so stupid. You're carrying on that retarded that ridiculous legacy. So number one for the total amount of cancer deaths, we're dying of cancer. Number one, we're smoking, we're drinking, we're not exercising, um, eating too much McDonald's. We're, we're, so we're dying of cancer. Marijuana is uh, showed in different studies to be a cure for cancer, but we're not. We don't care about our dead grandmothers who's dying of cancer. My grandmother died of colon cancer. Had she had uh, the hemp oil. It's possible that her cancer would have gone away for three years. She would have had to carry a colostomy bag while going from door to door selling vegetables, just like my ancestors did in 1869 when they first got here, raised farms, raised crops, and they sold their vegetables door to door to the city folks. We're number one in the uh, number one state with the poorest mental health, which uh, we're in a country with the number one worst mental health. America's got. Uh, the worst country for mental health is number one, and we're, we're the number one state for the poorest mental health. So it's just kind of like with the the uh, tobacco, well, tobacco too. Well, anyways, the uh, mental health. So we're number one state and the number one country for insanity. Kentucky is the number one state and the number one country for insanity. So I didn't get all of them, but that's a bunch of statistics, and we're going to do more coming up. So Occupy.
Fight the powers that be, Kentucky. It's a shithole state, but it's an organizer's dream. And if you're a good person, we need you. We need as many good people out there, more progressives and more than 99% fighting for the good cause. So stand up, Kentucky. I was born and raised out of Covington. I was born in Covington, raised up in Gent. So I'm a thoroughbred through and through. Bluegrass. I bleed blue and red. <laughs> okay. Peace.